Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Charlie and this video is all about how much it costs to buy a car. Because I'd be willing to bet that a lot of you may not know all of the expenses that go into actually buying a car. You don't just walk up, pay the sticker price and then uh, be on your merry way. Well, I mean, if you could, that'd be nice, but it doesn't quite work that way. So this video, we're going to go over all of the extra expenses and things you have to consider when buying a car. And to make this video a little bit more interesting, I'm going to be using my personal 2018 Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport as a demonstration. So the question is, how much do you think this $80,000 car cost? And spoiler alert, it's not $80,000. It's actually a lot less than that, and then it could be a lot more than that. But don't worry if that's confusing. I'm going to go through all of it, and we'll cover everything. And by the end of this, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what goes into buying a car and all the expenses you should consider before you make the decision yourself. And I'll let you know how much this car has cost me since I bought it two years ago. So I said this car cost $80,000 and then I said it didn't. So what gives? Well, I got that number from this piece of paper right here, which for most of you guys who have ever been to a car dealership before know, this is a window sticker. It basically breaks down the price of the car itself and then any of the extra options and stuff that gets specked out on it, uh, which this car has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight options on it that total $12,225. That's a lot, bringing the grand total price of this car to $79,000, which in Top Gear Maths is basically just 80 grand. So that's what we're gonna go with. But you also know when you go to a car dealership, you never just walk in and pay the price, unless you're not really all that smart. So you always go in there to negotiate. Dealers buy cars direct from the manufacturer at a lower cost than this MSRP. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there that you have to work with. And the secret is figuring out the ways you can get them to drop this price down. I used a number of these tactics myself to buy this car and I actually paid a whole lot less than you'd think. Now these are some of the tactics that I used when I was negotiating with the dealership to buy this car. And I'm only gonna touch on them briefly. If you guys are more interested in seeing a longer video about that and kind of more in depth, leave a comment down below and I may put together another video. The first thing that you need to make sure that you always, always do is come prepared. Even if you're not a car person like I am, just knowing a little bit about the market and a little bit about the car that you're looking at can go miles and miles in saving you time and frustration with shoddy salesmen who are just trying to get you to spend the most money that they can. Most of the time, salespeople are just trying to get you to buy the car that's best for them and not for you. Now, there may be some speculation on this next point, but this worked for me when I was buying this C7 Corvette, and that is you can work in your favor by going to a dealership at certain times of the month. And typically the best time you can go to a dealership is at the end of the month, because a lot of times manufacturers can provide bonuses if they hit the certain tiered level number of sales. Oh my God. <laughs> Turn your phone off. So if you go at the beginning of the month, they have the whole month to hit their quota. But if you go to the end and they're a little bit short, a lot of times they're gonna push really hard to try and get you a better price just to get the sale through. Now this next tip is more focused on specialty cars like this, and that is try and do a little bit of creative investigating on where you find the car. You see, I bought this, which is a sports car, from up north in the middle of winter. So they had this one just sitting on the lot and it sat for about a year because it's always raining or snowing and there's always salt on the ground and there's just nowhere to use a car like this. So I leveraged the fact that this car came from a dealership that didn't have a huge market to begin with, which is why this $80,000 car cost me just $63,000. But that's not the end of the story. As I alluded to at the beginning of this video, it's not quite that simple. There's a lot of expenses after the initial purchase that you have to consider and make sure that you don't forget about. You have things like taxes, tags, title, insurance, maintenance, wearable items. And if you decide to purchase the car using a loan, you've got interest you have to consider. But we're not done just yet because you also have to factor in depreciation. Which means as soon as you buy your brand new car, it starts costing you money immediately and on and on and on and on and on. 
We'll start with taxes because no matter what your situation is or what car you're looking at, you're gonna have to pay taxes. And it's gonna vary state by state, but most cars are gonna have at least sales tax. And some other cars, like let's say the supercharged Range Rover SUV that you've had your eye on, it's probably gonna have to pay some form of a gas guzzler tax because it doesn't meet certain emission standards. Where I live in Huntsville, Alabama, our sales tax rate is about 4.5% for my county, so I ended up paying about $2,800 in sales tax alone. And each year when I renew my tags for the car, they tack on what's called an ad valorem tax, which is based on the value of your car. So each year when I renew my tags, it's about $400, which adds up over time. The ongoing expenses can vary a lot from car to car, so you really wanna make sure you understand how you're gonna use it and what things you're gonna have to replace often. So obviously with this car, I don't drive it very often, so I've not had to worry too much about wearable parts, but it's something you definitely wanna consider when you're buying a car. On my Grand Sport Corvette, typical maintenance like an oil change, which I do myself to save labor and I don't really trust a lot of the dealers, cost me about 80 bucks because it takes 10 quarts oil, which is a lot. Other wearable items like brake pads cost around $400 for this car, and a set of four tires will set you back $2,000. But it's okay because they only last 10,000 miles anyways. For me, I only put about three to 4,000 miles on the car each year, so it's not been an issue and I haven't had to replace either of those things yet. As for gas, uh, who, who cares? But for the sake of this video, I average about 15 miles to the gallon around town. But like I said, who cares about gas? Insurance though was a factor and I bought this car when I was 26 so insurance was pretty high but it wasn't completely unreasonable so a few things helped me out there one I had a clean driving record two I was still enrolled in graduate school three the car was really low use on my policy and four I had multiple cars already on my policy which helps kind of you know they give you bundle discounts and stuff like that quick tip if your insurance policy has a paid in full discount you want to make sure you take advantage of that they'll allow you to pay month by month but a lot of times depending on the company you go through they'll offer you a discount to pay for your six or 12 month policy in full which I totally suggest that you do because it's a considerable amount of money and currently as a married 28 year old I pay about $62 a month for this car which is like I said it's not as bad as I would have thought and finally we're at the most not my favorite part of the video but we got to talk about loan interest here like most people if you're interested in buying a car on a loan you absolutely must 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 do your homework all they want to do is make your monthly payment a lower number to make you feel like you're saving money but actually they're doing the opposite the lower your monthly payment the more you're paying for the car it's a little counterintuitive but let me break it down for you real quick on a quick example and there are really only two factors that you really want to pay attention to when taking out a loan for a car and that's your interest rate and your loan term those are it you must know about those even between something like a few percent which doesn't sound like a lot but just to hear me out let's say i bought my car today for that sixty-three thousand dollars i mentioned earlier and i'm going to use a few interest rates that i found at the time of making this video one option is a three-year 36 month loan at three percent and the other loan is a seven year 84 month loan at six percent i didn't even know that they had loans that long your monthly payment for that sixty-three thousand dollar loan over the course of 36 months is going to be one thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars while it would only cost you nine hundred and twenty dollars a month for that 84 month loan but even though it seems like you're saving money for the longer term loan the reality is is that for that 36 month loan you're only paying $2,880 in interest. But here's the kicker, for that 84 month loan, you're gonna be paying an extra $14,000 on top of the price of the car just to extend it that long. So while a salesman may pitch that this $920 a month payment looks better and it sounds like you're saving money month to month by the time you end up paying the car off you've paid seven times the interest now i'm not saying all this to bash car loans i've had car loans and majority of the people out there take out loans to buy a car it's a huge expense i just want to illustrate please 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 do your homework at least have a little bit of working knowledge and understanding what you're working with you can google something as simple as auto loan calculator and you'll be able to punch in a few numbers and see exactly how much you're paying in interest over time how much the payment will be in everything so please if anything just do that the last expense i want to talk about 
is the one that gets talked about a lot with cars specifically, and that's depreciation. You've all heard it before. Cars are the worst place you can put your money. Since their values plummet the second you drive them off the lot. And while that's true for most cars, it's not necessarily true to that same degree for every car. For example, if you know what you're looking for and you can get a good price on it and it's a desirable car, there's a potential for you to lose very little money and if not, maybe in the best case scenario, actually make some money off a car. In doing some research for this video, I actually Kelly Blue Booked the value of my car just to see how much it had hit on depreciation. And it turns out the value of my 2018 manual transmission Grand Sport was more than I paid for it new two years ago. What? And with the trend of more electric cars coming onto the market, I really think that cars like this that are a bit more specialty focus driven, that are manual transmissions are gonna at least hold their value. But the best way to kind of solve for this depreciation is if you buy a car that's slightly used, typically that initial hit is the worst. So if you buy a car that's a year or two old with a few thousand miles on it, it's basically still new, but it kind of has the bulk of that depreciation hit already there, so you're saving some money that way. So what does all this mean for somebody who's looking at buying a car, and how much has this car cost me since I bought it new two years ago? All in all, I've paid right at $70,000 to own this car. That covers the purchase price, taxes, tags, title, interest, insurance, maintenance, and 400 gallons of gas, where my local premium gas price has hovered right around $2.60 averaged over the past two years. So it's a pretty interesting conclusion to a really seemingly simple question that we had, which is how much does an $80,000 car cost? Well, it turns out about $70,000. I'm just playing. As you guys know, the whole spirit of this video has just been to encourage you guys to do research on your own and just learn about it. If you're intimidated by buying a car, leave a comment below and I'll try and maybe put together a video on how I go about finding and buying and negotiating a car. I wanna thank you for sticking around this long. If you learned something awesome, please share it with everybody. I hope that it inspired you to go off and learn something else you found interesting in this video. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, please leave that in the comment below. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out, and it lets me know what content's valuable to you guys and what you want to see. Till next time.